What? Ring the bell. Me? Of course you. Why me? Because you lost the toss. To tell her not to ring the bell. Nothing about ringing that bell. It's part and parcel. Eh? Look, if you don't ring the bell, she won't know we're here. And if she don't know we're here, well, you can't tell her now, can you? Part and parcel. Can't you do it? Hey, I could, but it'd be a dangerous proceeding. Would it? Certainly it would. Look, if you're going to do something, I have to know that you're going to honour that to the letter. Remember what the Sarge said? Can't trust your husband, you end up divorced. Can't trust your partner, may will end up dead. What? Oh, from ringing a doorbell? Hey, today it's a doorbell. Tomorrow it's a madman with an axe and a sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> We're not working tomorrow! I don't mean it literally. <laughs> Tomorrow's Christmas Day! I know that! Look, just go ahead and ring the bell. How old is she? Who? The mother. How should I know? Well, how old's the... Deceased? How old is she? <sighs> 30... It. Well, if she's 34, that means her mum must be... What? Old? Not necessarily. 34. Maybe she had her at 16. 16? But people have children at 16. Not these days, they don't. Well, we're not talking about these days, though, are we? We're talking about 34 years ago. 34 plus 16. 50. That's old? No, it's not. 50's? Oh, well, not these days, it's not. Thought we weren't talking about these days. Well, we are now. Hey? But we're talking about these days now. Just second. Look, all I'm saying is that 50 isn't what it was. Well, 50 is middle aged now. But 50 is what 40 was 10 years ago. What? 30? What's wrong with you? Her daughter's been killed on the motorway. Well, it's not an easy thing to hear at any age, is it? Now, go ahead and ring the bell. <laughs> why not the knocker? Why not the bell? Well, it might give her a fright. Well, use the knocker then. Do you reckon? Whatever you like. Right. You ready? This ollie's a bit loose. I'll just use the bell. Right, you ready? Stop asking me if I'm ready and just ring the bloody thing! Don't be ridiculous. Are you not scared? And what's there to be scared of? Well, she might be old and frail and hearing this. He could kill her blood. The shot could kill her stone dead. I thought we were going to help people, not in the labs. Well, it's not our fault what happened. It'll be awful when she knows about it. Well, someone has got to tell her. Now, press it. I'm trying. Oh, what do you mean? Trying? What's wrong? I'm trying, but I can't! And why not? My finger's too short! Why, you? No! 
It wasn't. <coughs> it was an accident on the road. Bun, what? She knew. But we need to go and help her. But how, how did she know? I don't know. I suppose there's just things above her nose, isn't there? No explaining them. Sorry. Come on then. She looks old for 50. Look at that. Awful. Do you reckon? Not the sash. The situation. Oh, yeah. Awful. Doesn't seem fair, does it? It's always a way. The cruel and reckless shoot to the top. It's a kind one to get it in the neck. I'm living proof of that. Still, I'd rather be kind and get nowhere than successful and cruel. Me too. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Where do you think I'm going to get to? Nowhere. You're just saying that. Not at all. In fact, even in your case, getting nowhere might be setting the sights too high. Do you reckon? Absolutely. What are you doing? That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Right. Well, that, 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 that's good. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you now. I wouldn't rather go nowhere oh. with anyone else but you. Oh. Oh. Mrs. Connor, um, she, she's just a bit upset about your situation. We both are. Oh, uh, Blunt. How do you do? And uh, that's my colleague, Constable Gobble. How do you do? No, how are you? Gas. No, Gobble. Oh, no, that's me. I'm Gas. I'm sorry, I didn't make myself quite clear. Oh, it's not you. Her oh, arm no, is a little tight. Well, Ken, we just want you to know how very sorry we are for your sad and tragic loss. Well, she wasn't actually mine, but I suppose it really should have made a difference, should it? Never really had much contact with her, or rather she never had much contact with me. A bit jealous, I think, though goodness knows why. Oh, excuse me one moment. So she didn't get on with her daughter. Well, she weren't a daughter, was she? That's why they didn't get on. My parents weren't my parents either. I still got on with them. Thought you didn't. They don't now, but I used to. So when did you stop getting on with them? When they told me they weren't my parents. Right, that's it. <coughs> when she comes back here, I'll expect you to get her to fix the time to come and identify the body before I lose what's left in my mind. Look at that tree. Why? Look at it. Look at those presents. Look how lovingly they've been wrapped. Think those presents will ever be opened? We can't open them. Well, of course we can't, and that's my point. No one ever will. They'll just sit there, waiting as the dust gathers, waiting as the colours fade, forever waiting for the child that will never come. Poor presents! Right, I'm going to the toilet. When I come back, I'll expect you to have concluded our business here. <coughs> yes, Mrs. We need you to come and identify your daughter's body. Yes, as soon as possible. Tomorrow. That would be ideal. Thank you, officer. You've been very kind. 
Wait! Not at all, madam. No, but much kinder than the other one. Glad it was you that told me and not her. Oh, really, madam, please, no. No, I insist. I'll be telling the Sarge all about it. I wouldn't be surprised if you got promoted there and then. And have a present too. Have the biggest present there is with love from me because actually I'm your mother. You're my... Yes, I'm your actual mother and all this has been a big thing to get you here so I can tell you. No. Yes, and all these presents are actually for you. Thank you. 